Um, good morning. Um, this is the weekly Volta TST meeting. Um, we are obviously uh, recording this for posterity. Um, let me see. Um, I don't know if um, uh, Mahir will be joining us, but Amit is at the dentist right now, so he might be a little bit late, but no worries. Um, okay, so the for the agenda, um, I put a few items in here if anybody want, needs to, would like to add any, feel free. Um, so I guess um, Denise uh, posted, uh, made a blog post about um, the 2.11 release. Um, if you want to uh, go ahead and cover uh, what was, if yeah, I think she's on. If you want to cover uh, the post and the uh, <laughs> the technar coming up, I can't talk sure. today. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, so I, I posted the blog, and um, we definitely want to get the word out about the release. I've also sent it to the uh, Volta announce announce list to um, share the information. We have scheduled the technar, um, which is open to anyone to join um for the 23rd of february and um pleased to say that we'll have um amit and mahir who will take the lead on that joey will also be joining um you can check out on the links here the agenda so we'll talk about uh they'll be talking about the release um you know and and pro really providing first an overview of siva and volta talking specifically then about the release and then Joey will talk a little bit about our CICD system and how we do our testing. Um, and then um, we'll cover you know, how, how folks can participate uh, in uh, the Volta project and um, where our resources are. So we, we're always trying to um, invite and extend our community, invite new members. So um, if, uh, if you know anyone who may have some interest, please invite them to join the Techinar. Um, it's open to everyone. If uh, if there's any questions um, or if you see any corrections or on the blog, let me know. But um, mostly the blog is a um, excerpt from the um, release notes. So um, if you do see anything though, uh, please let me know. Okay, good. Oh, sorry, just uh, removed the entry. Just had to add it back in. <laughs> Sure. Okay. So we'll be continuing to promote the Techinar and the blog in our newsletter, um, and um, mm. would appreciate anyone on this call certainly um, sharing the information with um, your peers as well. Okay. All right. Cool. All set. Okay. So for um, the next item, um, there have been some uh, different issues with testing. Some test suites not running. We've have some hardware failures in different places that are like Volta scale that was affecting the tests that were being run. So, um, whoops. So there's a, another wiki page started right now. Um, so the TST suggested that we create a priority list and start going after some of, there's just uh, a lot of things in a lot of different places. So we're trying to focus on going after the highest priority test failures. Um, the higher one, priority one would be tests that are tied to commit so that when you commit code, we trigger tests. And um, there are also um, tokens that you can inline within jobs like verify project license, tag collision unit test. Um, if you'd like your job to trigger additional tests beyond what normally is triggered, you can add these keywords in your commit message, and that'll be a signal to Jenkins to run additional tests. But we're going to be targeting those first for uh, priority two items. Um, uh, make this Mahir did up this list. Um, so periodic open O and you will go tests. Um, a lot of these are around BB Sim. So I started triaging some of these logs last night. There's Jira tickets being open for them now. Um, anybody can navigate into these and uh, start working on them if you'd like to, that's not a problem. So if we go in here, this is just a bulk capture of what's in the, failing, the logs right now. Like this one, uh, whoops, definitely have to fix the kind command. It has disappeared from uh, this one test suite. Um, I was reading a little bit about this last night. I think we're deploying Golang 116 as kind of the standard right now. 
there was mention in the kind documentation that um, a lot of it's built on Golang 117. I don't know if that's a might be a problem with the version that we're using, not having access to the go command, uh, the kind command, but we'll have to look into that and see what's going on. There are, oh, come on, stop going into edit mode. So there are some intermittent failures showing up. Um, some like in the Volta ONU templates in this case, we had a failure here. Um, uh, oh, this is just some conditional logic that needs to be changed. There's some other failures down below. Um, it's just for triage. We'll start going through identifying the problems, get JIRA tickets open for them, and then we can start addressing them. Um, one thing I'll point out though, um, we do have an older version of Python that's being used um, in the Volta repositories. Um, sometimes it's 3.6, sometimes it's 3.7. There's a couple of problems that I've noticed. One of them, the cryptography package, I'm not sure if we're using this or not, um, is deprecated in Python 3.6. We're probably using a new package. So we're gonna need updates in there. Um, but one of the problems I noticed was there's actually a performance problem going on. There are um, newer versions of a lot of the modules available and PIP is starting to install some of them. There's a lot of older versions conflicting with newer versions and there's warnings in the job logs that PIP is spending a lot of time trying to figure out these dependency chains. Um, so just going through and cleaning up the modules and the versions and making PIP just be able to make straightforward installation uh, choices rather than try having to figure things out will probably um, see an improvement for quite a few jobs because um, that's pretty much a core dependency. So um, if you wanna work on any of the, these test failures, feel free. If you find failures that do not have tickets open for them, please open new JIRA tickets, um, add comments as needed. Um, so uh, this is a holdover from the release. Um, we have a lot of the DT jobs, uh, the, the jobs running in Germany. These were on the, one of the, some of the hardware that was having issue, we transitioned them over to running on Zixel hardware that was in um, in the germ in the lab over in Germany. Um, there are also a set of Turk Telecom jobs. Um, while the release was going on, we were creating the Jenkins job to run the Turk Telecom jobs through the Jenkins UI. Um, we need to go back and revisit that because. The Jenkins UI is actually transient. Um, anything that's added in there, we generate jobs dynamically. And when that happens, anything added through the UI tends to disappear. So um, there's a this is a ticket open to do the work, but this is basically going to take the configuration we were using to create the Jenkins UI jobs and put them into Jenkins Job Builder so the jobs are permanent. Um, when that happens, you'll see a list of Turk Telecom jobs show up in this section as well. Um, we just have a legend of how to interpret the, you know, the colors appear passing, failing, and purple was just uh, being worked on, work on progress. Um, let me see, any questions about any of that? Uh, will we have the pipelines again in master and 2.11? Yes, master, um, let me, navigate here. Master we do have, um, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, excuse me. So master tests for the master branch are always under Volta 2X. Um, 2x and 2x verify. So we have the 2.8 folder, which is all of the legacy tests, and this will sh show up eventually. These are all in here, so you can select. I've been disabling some of the 2.8 tests, but you can still go in here and manually launch them. For Volta 2.11, um, I need to figure out something that's going on with this. Um, we do have some of the tests in here. 
and they are starting to run now as periodic jobs. Um, I was able to verify that this morning. One thing I'm finding though is this is uh, Torsten, I think, pointed this out. There was a subset of 211 tests in the folder. So the Volta 28 tests are configured. It's actually a manual selection and there's check boxes that you can go in and choose what shows up in here. That's why there's a lot more, there's quite a few more entries in here. The Volta 211 folder is using filtering. Specifically, I'm looking for anything that's on the Volta 2X branch, or sorry, the Volta 211 branch, um, which these guys are obviously showing up here on here. I need to figure out why the the other jobs that we're manually selecting are not showing up in the Volta 211 branch. But you can, as of right now, you can still run the tests on the master branch. Um, and eventually the rest of the jobs will show up in here in the 211 folder as soon as I can figure out what pattern matching we need to for the 211 flavored jobs that are missing to show up in here. Does that answer your question? Mm, I, uh, not exactly, but uh, I will mm -hmm. see and take a look at it and ask you in Slack if needed. Okay. Oh, sorry, Torsten, I didn't notice that uh, that was you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so for the last item I have right now, we talked about this in channel a while back. So there's two ways that we can run builds and tests. There's a notion of keep going. Um, it doesn't matter what fails. You want to run completely to the end of uh, a test, usually for a testing run. Some of our tests run for upwards of four hours. So you don't, necessarily want to exit with an error on the very first test that occurs. So we run in keep going mode, you know, gather as much status as you can and exit at the end with failure. Um, what we've been finding, there are some cases where some of the very long job logs, errors get buried in the, in the content and those errors uh, are not necessarily worked on or, you know, they're not visible so they don't get addressed. And there've been cases where some, I found cases where some commands have failed or commands have been missing and the shell exit handling for errors did not cause Jenkins to flag the, the failure as an error. So we're gonna change this temporarily. This is a conditional that we can toggle, but we're basically going to remove the run everything until completion and change it to exit or um, uh, exit as early as possible when an error occurs. And that way we can identify the problems, go in and clean them up. And after the builds and the tests are clean, then we can turn it back to the long running version if we need to, which hopefully when everything's clean, we don't have to deal with that. But um, some of the things that are going to change to facilitate this, the make command has a dash K option, and that's a lot of what's facilitating this. Make will continue running tests, launching commands. It doesn't matter if the intermediate commands fail, we're gonna keep going until everything has been run. Um, the second one, um, there's a, a set command that you can run in the, in the bash in the born shell um, to enable errors, it basically makes the shell commands exit whenever errors occur. So E enables shell error detection, U enables undefined variable checking, and dash O is the really important one. This says if any commands fail within a shell pipeline, you want the exit status from the pipeline to propagate back to the parent and cause the parent shell to exit with an error. If this is left out uh, where you'll, you can see problems with this, um, if you run a shell pipeline to gather a value from a config file or something like that, and maybe the file doesn't exist, an error will manifest in the pipeline, but that's not propagated back to the parent and causing a failure because the, well, the set-o pipe fail is not enabled. So we're going to go through and remove the inhibiting of these flags. Sometimes they've been turned off because of intermittent test failures. We're gonna re-enable them so we can identify the errors and start going in and looking at some of the, if there are transient failures there, um, see what's causing them. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of that? 
Um, obviously, with a change like this, we're probably going to see a lot more, see some new failures surfacing, but just a heads up that that's going to be happening. Okay. Um, well, I'll cover this quickly. Um, the Volta 211 folder um, that Torsten was just asking about, this is some of the detail for it. Um, last TST meeting, or since the last TST meeting, I found that there was a syntax error in the BBSIM test scripts. Um, there's some shell code buried inside a groovy script that's being passed to Jenkins, and there was an escape problem in there. It's been there for a long time. Um, and basically, when we tried to launch the 211 tests, they were failing on this syntax error. So that's been fixed. The jobs are starting to run now. Um, this is what I mentioned before, changing the filtering on the folder so that we're matching more jobs. Um, and periodic jobs are running. I did find that this morning. Um, as I mentioned, the 2.8 tests do ex still exist. They've just been disabled. We can manually launch them when we need to. Um, the reason for disabling them is mostly we don't want to flood the queue and block community jobs if we can help it. Um, in general, some of the pipeline jobs have been disabled. Um, we have some scale hardware issues. That's the, um, the HP Blade that only has two processors running out of eight. Um, that's, I think, what facilitated moving some of the jobs over to the Zixel hardware over in Berlin. Um, I found a more recent one. There's a Jenkins node called QA Test VM Pod. Um, if you go into the Jenkins dashboard in the left margin, these are the pipeline jobs that are running. I've been finding these jobs blocked. Let's see if I can find the right one. Yeah, the QA test pod is VM is offline, so the job is just sitting here. Um, we ha we're going to have to look into see what's going on with that one. Um, the logs were saying that there was no route to host, so something's going on with that. Uh, connection timed out. Uh, oh, that's different. That was a timeout. Sorry, I'm wandering around. Um, OK, so that's probably the bulk of what I have. Um, the floor is open if anybody has anything to bring up. Hello, everybody. Um, I, I was uh, trying to verify if we really um, able to release the Volta to that eleven. So um, I tried to install um, using the uh, harm charts, but I suspect we don't use the correct versions of the components. So probably we need one more patch to properly release the Volta to that lemon um, in the in the Volta Helm charts. Um, if you Joy, if you can open open the repository. Uh, hold on just one sec. Let's see. Um, okay. Could, could you please open the GitHub? Sure. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be easier for me. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yes. So, for example, if we look at the Volta that open ONU, uh, yes, and the chart YAML. So the version, the app version, is here on the bottom. Yeah, two dot two dot eight. But I think our version is uh, higher, something higher. So probably we need to um, update both the F version here 
and the version here in in all of the um, this on these charts. And I, I don't know then how to um, how these changes will be applied to the ham repository. Um, I hope Joy, you know that. Um, applied to the Helm repository. What we generally do is rebuild the components and the versions. And then after the component has been published out to Maven Central or GitHub, then we go in and update the Helm charts to have the, the version needed. Hmm. OK. okay. And, and after, after doing that, we need another patch and bump all of these versions again for the to, to prepare for the next release of Volta. Okay. But this these charts are still for Volta 2.10, we can say. I can I can prepare a patch for that if you like, Joey. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's good. Uh... Okay, I'll wait. Okay, two eleven. Okay, I'll wait for the patch then. That's good. Okay. I don't have anything else other than this one. Okay. Does anybody else have anything else? Uh, anything they'd like to bring up? Uh, Joey, uh, as you know, that there are uh, two changes in the open OMU adapter that we did not include in the 2.11 release. And according to my understanding, we should plan a patch package for them soon. Okay. Uh, therefore, we would need a, a branch, a 2.11 branch for the open OMU adapter. Yeah, I'll uh, go on. Perhaps you can, can, can keep it in mind. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, because these two. Changes, I think, are was going to to the eleven. One was is memory uh, leak issues uh, during long term test, and the other one was the unsu some unsupported OCI yeah. alarms for the OMT signal. That's all the patches that you were merging in this morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll go try and create that branch for you then. It means the, the branch will start with uh, 2.73 and we only will increase um, the, the patch version of the, um, of the version. Mm -hmm. uh, as, you, as you have seen, I, I already increased the, the minor version uh, for these patches to demonstrate that we continue with the higher version in the master. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, I'm, I'm looking forward for the branch and when it is when it does it exist, then I will um rebase the patches or backport the patches. Okay. All right. I'll try and get that for you soon. Uh, okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, so on the Volta error cases, so I have replied uh, to the comments which uh, Mahir and Sarkant has provided. Yeah, so if we can, yeah, we can patch those up. So uh, we are starting the implementation for this. So uh, please feel free to provide comments. I think so the core part pretty much uh, Mahir and Sarkant have reviewed. Mahir and Sarkant, if we can uh, just go through the open OLT adapter part as well which is uh, at the bottom of the uh, same page. Mm. Uh, that would be good. And also, uh, I have put up the results, test results of removing the GoRoutine, uh, wherever GoRoutines were there for Volta core. Surprisingly, the, the results are better after removing the GoRoutines in few cases. And for few cases wherein we are posting it to Kafka, uh, they're having coroutine now uh, uh, works well. So we'll have to take a call whether to have coroutine while posting to Kafka or no. 
So yeah, th that's something we'll have to check. But either way, yeah, feel free to uh, provide comments on the on the document. Okay, I'll take a look at Abilash. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now that the uh, 11 is released, uh, hopefully we can start off with the review use of this on demand OMT alarms. Uh, hold it if you can uh, spend some time and provide your comments. Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah, no, that's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to add? Okay, I'll carry this item uh, forward to the next meeting too. I forgot to copy it. Sorry about that. Okay, well, um, I guess thanks everybody and we'll see you again next week. Thank you, bye. Yep, bye. Mm -hmm. yep, bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.